Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon Gentile here, Legacy Group Real Estate Team, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Q&A Fridays. So every Friday, we're bringing you a lot of the questions we get. We, like I said many times, we have a list a mile long of the stuff that you're asking us, and we appreciate that a ton because we can't think of absolutely everything. So we appreciate that. Today, we have something that we get asked a lot, something that I get asked a lot. We do our insider's report, so it's our 30,000 foot view, you know, looking at the global economy, looking at the market as a whole, and we, we did our market update yesterday, that's the micro level, that's just, you know, the, the a local area. This is a question we get a lot after our insider's reports, and it is, what are you studying? The people you're studying, what are you studying? What are you reading? What are you watching to, to find this stuff out? Uh, believe me, I'm no genius. I just try to study people and follow people that are a lot smarter than I am. So it's a question I get. I tell you guys every time, I promise you're gonna get something out of this. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's value that I get from all kinds of people from different spectrums and I wanna give back and provide that for you guys. That way you can see what I'm seeing and not, I don't just sound like a crazy person when I'm up here giving our insider's reports and things like that. And I'm saying things that kinda, sound outrageous at times, but it's what a lot of the, the biggest guys in the world are saying. Obviously, you're gonna have people that dissent clearly. You know, it's, we've had our, our, our tiffs on here with you know, things like Warren Buffett and, and different stuff, some you know, people like that. I consider Warren Buffett, people like that, more of an anomaly than anything. So um, we have guys on here that I, all, I trust very, uh, very much, but they have some differing opinions as well. So. Again, there's a question I get a lot, and it is, what are you studying? What are you looking at? What are you reading? What are you watching? And one of the big things, I've got the book right here. I talked about it yesterday a little bit, but Rich Dad, Poor Dad, we got the 20th anniversary edition, came out just, I think, a week or two ago. And, you know, obviously, Robert Kiyosaki, my biggest mentor, he, he wrote this 20 years ago, and it's truer today now than ever. And it, it's talking about your house is not an asset, you know, things that were very controversial and still are controversial. And it's just using the vocabulary that, really that we weren't taught. It's using the vocabulary, as he puts it, of the wealthy. And, and that is just, you know, a house is not an asset. It is an asset, but it's not the, the homeowner's asset. It's the bank's asset. So, you know, even, even if someone has their house paid off, it's still, you're still paying property tax on it, right? You still have insurance on it. Uh, maybe, maybe you don't have insurance on it, but you're still paying property tax. And if you don't pay a property tax, then what, right? So then it's, it's always that, that, you know, unless you own a rental property and you're getting positive cash flow, then that becomes your asset. So it's just using that vocabulary and getting on the right side of the fence, basically. And that's, that's what this book is about. This was one of the books that changed my life. And, you know, so he has, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. One of the other books that really changed my life as well is Why We Want You to Be Rich. And that was one of the first books I read. And that was actually with Donald Trump, you wrote that with. And I didn't even know who he was at the time. This was, I don't mean, know, six, seven, eight years ago. And really when I started getting into everything, after the crash, I really started getting into stuff. I found one of the first books I found was Why We Want You to Be Rich. And he wrote it with Donald Trump. Excuse me, I am, I've been struggling with allergies the last couple days, so I apologize for maybe it's some not so great audio. Um, why? <laughs> um, but he wrote it with Donald Trump, and I had no idea who Robert Kiyosaki was, but I knew who Donald Trump was. And I, I picked up the book, I think it was in a bargain bin at a grocery store, of course. I'm in the reading section at a you know, Walmart, one of the super stores, whatever. And I'm grocery shopping, and I see this book, in the bargain bin, it's like three bucks or something like that. And I'm like, oh yeah, cool, I love real estate. And I knew Donald Trump and I was like, I don't know who this guy is. I picked it up and it changed my life. It changed everything for me and really put everything into perspective. Shortly thereafter, I read this and I've you know, gone through and read all the books in his series, all of his advisor's books. I've read his, you know, most of his books multiple times. But that is, these two books are, are game changers. And these were a lot of things that didn't make sense to me and a lot of things that I saw growing up but I couldn't really place, I didn't really know what they meant. These two books really put everything together for me and made things make sense. So talking about leverage and your money working for you, things like that, really, really 
put things into perspective for me and, and really kind of changed the course of my life. I want to read just a couple. I'll just read you, hopefully they're intriguing to you, just a couple of chapters in, in Rich Dad Poor Dad. Uh, the rich don't work for money. Obviously talking about financial literacy, changing vocabulary, things like that. Minding your own business. So that means obviously more than one thing um, in, in multiple different ways. Minding your own business means, you know, instead of just you letting the government or letting you know, uh, an entitlement program just run things for you. Like Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn's one of my favorite personal development people. And he always said, if you let the government take care of your money at the end of your life, you can divide your wealth by five. But if you take care of your own wealth and you actively are, are researching and you're investing and getting smarter, increasing your financial literacy, at the end of your life, you can multiply by five. So these are the things, again, these are the, the people that I've studied. I mean, he talks, Jim Rohn, I think I found Jim Rohn through Robert Kiyosaki. And there's some, really probably my first two mentors. And they still, to this day, are my biggest mentors. Even eight years later, they're still the biggest people that I follow and the best people. It just happened to be the very first two that I found, which is ironic. But um, I mean, obviously, the history of taxes and the power of corporations um, and the rich invent money. You know, so that it's a whole different. You know, we are always taught growing up, all of us uh, were taught that money didn't grow on trees, right? Well, that's wrong. <laughs> Ask the Federal Reserve. Is it grows on trees all over the place? It grows on printing machines. They're right as we speak. They're just pumping out money. So it does grow on trees, and it's up to us to figure that out. Up to us to find a better way. You don't learn it in school. You're not learning it from you know anywhere. You know, it's up to us to find that path and, and find out how to get on the other side of that fence. And it's, you know, it's, it, it, money is just a weird subject because no one, you know, so few people really want to talk about it. Everyone needs it and wants it, but very few people want to talk about it. It's, it's often a sore subject. It kind of goes into the religion and politics discussions a lot of times. So very interesting. Um, Harry Dent, I mean, this, you know, Robert Kiyosaki is to me, he's my biggest mentor. He's amazing. Then you get into Harry Dent, Jim Rickers, Mike Maloney. These are all, these guys all are, they do a lot of work together, things like that. They have each other on each other's podcasts, things like that. But um, Harry Dent is probably the big, biggest demographics guy there, there is. I really don't know a demographics guy bigger than he is. He has a lot of things. So these two guys are very interesting because I was just talking to somebody earlier today about this, about gold and silver. Because I believe that those are the two most undervalued assets right now. I could show you, and maybe next time, next, next Insider Report, we'll show you the graphs. I can show you 10 different graphs right now of the economy doing this, you know, just going down like that. So when you compare the Dow to gold, you compare the Dow to silver, you compare the Dow to things of value, oil, uh, different commodities, it goes down. It's doing this. But when we look at it, when we look at the Dow, it's doing this. So we think it's great, we think it's awesome. But when you compare the Dow, which is paper, you know, it's not an actual tangible thing, it's doing this when you compare it to everything else. So these guys talk a lot about that. Mike Maloney talks the most about, about this. Harry Dent says that gold's going down, it's going to $250 an ounce, and it's going down. He's a big demographics guy. And you have guys like Jim Rickards, who he was one of the first guys, he actually was the first guy, he game plan or war planned, uh, the first financial war game scenario with the Pentagon, I believe in the late 90s or the early 2000s. And he says, you know, it's going to 10, 20, $50,000 now, it's gold is. So these two guys have totally different thoughts, you know, and then you have guys like Mike Maloney who think both things could happen. So it's, you know, again, and then we go back to Robert Kiyosaki, always talking about being three sides, each coin has three sides. It's got two sides and the edge. And you want to be on the edge and being able to see both sides of the coin. And, and that's where I talk to people and I have my belief of where things are. I think, like I said, gold and silver, when you look at stuff, you know, it's gold and silver, commodities, oil, very low right now, very undervalued, the most undervalued asset there is. And, you know, stocks, you know, paper and real estate are very overvalued right now. They're getting very overvalued. Stocks are very, probably the most, they're the most overvalued. So when you start looking at that, then you start to see patterns, you start to see things. And like Mike Maloney thinks that we're gonna go into a deflation and then we're gonna go into an inflation or, or a hyperinflation. So he kind of takes a page out of both books and says, hey, you guys are 
great, but you're you're both right and you're both wrong. Like it's it's you and these they're amazing. All these guys are currency historians. I mean, I think he's probably one of my favorite guys. Just as a currency historian, uh, straight up, he is probably I think the best. Um, but again, this is why I have multiple different people on here because it gives you a perspective, gives you different perspectives as to the different sides of the coin and on the edge and being able to see both sides. So um, Harry Dent, again, demographic guy, right? So he has the demographic cliff, talks about, and we talked about it in the, in the last Insiders Report, we talked about the, the baby boomers and how there's gonna be a lot more sellers than there are buyers coming up because there's so many people selling off, they're turning 70 and a half as of last year, they have to sell. And there's not gonna be enough you know, millennials, all those people buying in, there's not enough people to buy up what's being sold. So one of the reasons why a lot of these guys think there'll be a crash coming up, he talks about the demographic cliff and he talks about those problems that we're gonna run into with you know there being too many buyers or too many sellers and not enough buyers. Super, super interesting book. Jim Rickards, he, is, he has the road to ruin. So he has some other books, you know, he has a new case for gold, things like that, and talking about just, you know, really the death of the, of the, of the dollar, the death of the currency, and in just the direction we're going. So uh, Mike Maloney, he has the guide to investing in gold and silver. So he is, he's, like I said, he's probably the best currency historian that that there is really I think he's, he's just one of the best out there and he really from the studying from the beginning of time so when people ask me what are you studying what are you looking at what things are you doing these are the things I'm looking at these are the thing the people I'm reading these are the people I'm researching these are the people I'm keeping tabs on constantly and uh, and just staying close to because I mean let's be honest we all know the government's not doing it for us right so find those people stay close to them and, and be able to see both sides of the coin here, or all three sides, I guess, right? Be, be able to be on the edge and see both sides of the coin. So these books are awesome. I really highly, highly recommend this. It's, um, they, won't, they won't disappoint. If, if anything, they'll be a good read for you. So these are the questions I get asked a lot and about the economy. They're the best books out there to read. And uh, I hope you guys get some serious value out of this. And uh, we love bringing it to you. I love talking about it, so I appreciate all of you who are, you know, constantly talking about it with me. Sorry, I'm just I'm uh, not feeling it today, but um, this is what I, I love doing. It's my one of my passions, and it, it's cool because as a real estate team, we get to do this a lot, and this is part of our business. So we appreciate you guys a ton. We appreciate your your comments, your questions, your snaps, your your Facebook messages, everything. So thank you so much, guys. Again, I'm Brandon Gentili. We look forward to seeing you next week.